Good evening. We are live. We want to welcome you this evening to Words for the Soul. I am Overseer M. Alexander. We are on week 84. And I tell you, we're coming with part two. Part two, moving relationships from good to great. We have so much wonderful feedback and we're so excited. So if you haven't had a chance to get on yet, go ahead and like, tag, and share as we get ready to introduce our, our guests. I tell you, this is going to be a blessing that people know that we are on. Again, we're on week 84, moving relationships from good to great. We have um, our couples that will introduce themselves, and then we will go ahead and begin. I'm going to start with you this time, Bishop. Go okay. ahead, because I, I didn't last time. Okay. Well, my claim to fame is that I'm married to her um, <laughs> for 34 years, coming up this August. We've been dating for 38 and uh, it's been wonderful, this wonderful. And I am the Bishop Trevor Alexander and the proud pastor of True Vine Church with some great, wonderful disciples. All right, well, thank Second you. Second to none. Praise God. All right, um, next, who would like to go next? And Louis, she's looking at you. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, we're Mara and Louis Rodriguez, and we um, have been dating since 2010. We got married in 2014, and we are one week away from being full term with our third child. Um, so praise God, we made it that far. <laughs> and we have done a year of long distance in our dating, which I think that was something that was really helpful for us it was hard and helpful at the same time um but we are just very humbled and blessed and happy to be here because I think this is a part of our journey and mission is to continue to get with other couples and other people who are exactly what this topic is about learning how to go from wherever you are to great <laughs> whatever <you> <laughs> I like that. I like that. All right. And we are Michael Roberts and Doshi Piper. We are disciples of True Vine. We met May of 2019. And he tells people, what do you say? I didn't let you go. Or something like that. You, Some... you know what you did. <laughs> He's a jokester, y'all. So, but anywho, um, we he proposed to me October of of last year, twenty one, and October of this year, we will will be married, and um, these um, two years of dating has um, definitely definitely strengthen our relationship and and has been helpful um it's it's been a struggle um to navigate the relationship um in and out of church but but to be in ministry and navigating a relationship and we're both in full-time ministry i think has has challenged us and strengthened us at the same time all right like, yeah. like Amara and um, Louis distance so they're, they're year apart. <laughs> oh, see, that's beautiful. I'm trying to see. Um, okay, praise God. So, brother, brother Michael, want to say something? You're muted. Okay. Uh, well, I just wish he'd tell the true story on <laughs> when we met, but I, I that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, you have to talk offline so everybody could get you. <laughs> oh, gosh, that's awesome. Praise God. So I just want to, again, go ahead and like, tag, and share. We are getting started. I was looking for something to, to take place and it didn't pop up. So it's, we're going to start with our questions today because we did not get a chance to address what would your marriage mission statement look like? And I know you have some four bullet points or three to four that you would like to share that I believe that will be a blessing to everyone that's listening. So who would like to start? We, we can start. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll kind of throw some things that we wrote down and then we talked 
about even recently. Um, but the fir our first stab at this, um, not in any uh, particular order, but right. we noted um, mission statement related to our marriage is uh, being able to say that we are dependent on God. And that's right. both um, individually and together as a couple. Yes. Um, and, I, and I think that um, the, mo the, the opportunities we have been given to talk about relationship and marriage, we've, our go-to visual that we've shared with people is that, oh, that okay. triangle vision of God at the top and yes. us at the bottom yes. as individuals. Yep. And, and as we get, as we individually get closer to God, it's really the only way that we can come closer together. Um, so that, and, uh, the second thing, um, and, and Mara talked about this last time and, and the words that, uh, she used was, um, uh, a genuinely, uh, attractive marriage. And, and I also touched last time on the fact that it would be a huge honor and blessing for us to be able to see and, and watch our kids um, want our type of marriage because yeah. all right you know it, what's happening inside this house is different yes. than what can be perceived and portrayed on the outside so Amen. our kids would be to us that testament of like they desire this type of relationship yes. um, and then one that we thought that we continued on even today was uh, the way we phrased it was equipped to accompany others Oh, um, okay. And so uh, we were we were talking and saying and, and focusing on that word equipped, because even in in marriage counseling, you know, when when we talk to our counselor and we're like, well, you know, if for me personally, it's like if I could quit my job and do anything, you know, she she kind of drills down into that. And she's like, uh -huh. well, then what do you see yourself doing? And it's like really just uh helping others become the best version of themselves like that, right. that so you can qualify as life coach whatever whatever the case may be it's that in that realm and and we and then i said well and i would love to do that alongside with mana like for us to be able to help even um couples relationships and things like that and she was like well no that you guys <laughs> first have to work on yourselves before you you know, so it's like in our minds, it's like we have to be equipped, like we have to go right. through that grind of um, really loving the routine of refining and polishing our marriage. Yes. Uh, and, and then we even even talking today that there are cycles to that. And and in cycles, you can consider the cycles of a team that we we're talking right. about today teams you have the four the four stages forming storming mm -hmm. norming and performing okay. and knowing that it's not just one straight linear shot throughout you know from from here to when we die but it's cycles of that and mm -hmm. and being able to know how to support each other through those different stages and then beyond that through the finding knowing what what phase you're in in any given year of marriage um because it, it could go from one year to another or every five years whatever the case may be but uh, all that feeds into being equipped to have that awareness and be intentional with what we need to do between our relationship to then share with others and walk with others um on that so and I think for the fourth point, just because uh -huh. I love this question, I think it's one that I want to be constantly, I would love to be in prayer about with him to refine and then revisit okay. to, you know, see how things adjust. I'm super excited to hear from everybody else too. Um, the other thing I would add in there, as far as our mission statement for marriage would be making account of having accountability a priority. Okay. As far as whether it's with at least one mentor couple 
a professional counselor, okay. um, things like that. I just think that is invaluable and we can easily get, um, you know, we're in it. So we, we're going to be limited in how we can see it. And so to be able to have those, that outside perspective to keep you in check, it's just like how you have a coach or a trainer, if you're trying to be great, you know, in anything right. to get that feedback. And so I think that's something that to continue to make sure that that's there, like okay. that consistently throughout our life, because we could easily say, oh man, we, you know, we got, we made it, we got to a phase where, okay, we don't need that anymore. And I feel like that's exactly when um, you, you know, the devil can attack hardcore. So if something like that was a part of the mission statement, then it's more on our radar as far as priority. Yeah. That reminder comes back. That's good. Let, let me uh, give a little backdrop to this to, to the question. I was getting ready to do um, that. Go ahead. We have been doing seminars for t- 25 years, I guess, maybe longer. And when we started seminars, we realized one of the things that many people don't do is to come up with a marriage mission statement. And so we instituted the marriage mission statement, I guess, around year 24. And we have ours done and we... at you know, every time you do a, 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 a seminar, we always pull it out and review it, right, to make sure that we're on track. Right. And so ours has seven bullet points. And I, mm-hmm. actually, I gave it, I make this an assignment. So um, Doshi and, and Michael don't know this yet, that this is, this is a prelude to your assignment. Because I think if we, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> because I think what everybody should do is to have a mission, marriage mission statement before we say I do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Versus just get and say that I do, then trying to figure it out. Yes. And and so um, we instituted this 24, 25 years ago, and it's been a wonderful blessing to, to see couples work on it. Right. Um, I actually do it as an assignment uh, when I teach Christian marriage or God and human sexuality to help the people to look, even if you don't have a significant other, to put a marriage mission statement together. So when you meet your significant, you say, this is my, I, my idea of marriage is, and then you can look it over together and then you can start working it together. But to go into a relationship blind, um, I think many of us do that and we figure it out as we go. And that's how we, I think we make some mistakes along the way. So that's why that, that um, statement came out. But um, Minister, Dosh, uh, Minister Michael and uh, Pastor Doshi, yours is coming. So this is a prelude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead, go, go next. Okay. Well, what I'm glad you gave us, you informed us of that because we got a head start. (laughs) (laughs) Jump on our assignment. So uh, Michael and I discussed that we believe um, our marriage mission is to make one another better. Okay. So that um, we can fulfill God's mission for our lives. And and that is through, and we both picked two um, characteristics or two um, bullet points. And my two is um, communication. Okay. I, I pick communication and, and compassion. And so com- what I mean by communication is um, making communicating with God and um, my significant other a priority. Right. Okay. So that we can um, continue to have a clear understanding of where we are in our lives, where we may need assistance or accompaniment, like um, Ma- Mara and um, Louis said, okay. so that we can, we, if, if there's a challenge, if there's a barrier, if there's something that we need to work through, um, we're not we're being proactive about it proactive. Our, okay. that's good okay. about it and so we want that communication to be strong for that and then when we can't figure it out we know we always know we have prayer yes to go to amen we always have prayer to go to and and i another i guess bullet point i picked was um compassion having compassion for and with one another you know, understanding that we we didn't grow up in the same city, let alone right. the same neighborhood, let alone the same the same home, and so we don't bring the same core values right. 
to the relationship. That Pastor Doshi, I'm glad y'all didn't grow up in the same home. Cause that'd be a whole different relationship. Ooh, you sure right. understand that, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So, or even even with um with parents who ideals are are similar, right? And and having compassion for the other person and knowing that it's not something um, wrong with with them and how they were raised. It's right. just, they're just different. Correct. Mm -hmm. And seeking That's to it. to embrace um that difference and then michael has his his two bullet points Mine all right respect and compromise okay and the reason why i picked respect was you have to respect your significant other okay even though you may not agree with it mm -hmm. true yeah yeah but you have to respect the way that she feels she thinks and the way she operates and the only way that you can respect that is that you have to compromise. You have to understand that it's not my way or the highway. Right, right. right. That's good. And it's, it's more than one way to do things. There you go. Yes, there is. And well, so when, when um, she was talking about we grew up in different cities and, you know, Bishop, different households, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> But I mean, like my morals are not her, her morals. Mm -hmm. So when we come together, it's going to be some friction because we both dig our heels in. But then that's when you got to go to your compromise to listen and understand why you feel this way. Right. And it opens up your understanding also to understand that everybody don't do things the way you do. Right. True. True. So, that's yeah, true. that's why I picked those two. Very good. Go ahead. You were gonna say something. I wanna, um, you know, I think with, with with Michael's point of bullet point of compromise, uh, there's a level of vulnerability. Oh yeah. And when you compromise, and 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 when you are willing to engage in compromise, you're not you're being vulnerable with with your spouse your mm -hmm. your future spouse your life partner and and if you can be vulnerable with anybody it should be right. that person i agree with that yeah. all right we're going to share us but i just want to do a shout out this evening i see pastor sheila's on uh, let me see who else pastor jeff and some people have put on i thought i saw um jones Yes, Yolanda, yes, Jones. Yolanda Jones. Yolanda, good to see you this evening. Don't forget, and Nikayla, thank you for being on. Don't forget to like, tag, and share. We're talking about taking our relationships from good to great, no matter what state you're in. So we're talking about our mission statements. You want to start off? Yes. And, uh, Yolanda, if she sees you, she's doing better than me. Because all I can see is your name, but she said she sees you. So <laughs> I'm not even going to, I'm going to compromise and go with that. How's that? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> But see um, right there. you see her face on the oh on the screen. Okay, uh -huh. praise the Lord. Uh, we have seven bullet points, but I'm not going to use all of them. But our number one was to model a Christ-centered marriage that reflects good, sound family values mm -hmm. in our lives and to the people we touch. Right. That was our number one, and that goes pretty much with everybody's already said. Right. And then uh, <laughs> the Rodriguez has mentioned about their children, and our fourth bullet point. Uh, no, that was actually, yes. Uh -huh. Our fifth bullet point says to model a marriage that our children can and will learn from. And so each of us have that whole foundation that we, we are here more than just us. Right. And the, the people that we touch, the people that surround us, are either they are either subconsciously or consciously are looking to what we say and do and how we interact with one another. But our, um, our third, our second point okay. was to express genuine love for each other mm -hmm. right that mm -hmm. was our so christ-centered then uh, each other then our third point was our mission uh to remember our first mission is to each other yeah. right mm -hmm. and i think that's 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 always great so um if that that goes to what you're talking about the compromise because if we got christ first and we show love for each other and keep each other as our first mission. Right. Somewhere along the line, whenever there's a disagreement, it will be worked out. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not in our mission statement, but our mother, my mother-in-law, her mother, uh, the, I think it was the week before we got married, 
she get, gave us, no, she gave us a plaque on our wedding yes. day. Yes. It was a plaque on our wedding day. And it says, never go to bed mad at each other. That was right. the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And we have held that to heart. I don't care what time of the day it is, what time of the morning it is. Before we go to sleep, we're going to work through it. It may be three o'clock in the morning. That's right. We're going to work through this. And because we, we don't know tomorrow's promise. You could right. go to sleep now and may not wake up the next day. And so we always kept that uh, to heart. That's good. Yeah. And as you were saying that when we get to the place that we don't, um, in these 34 years of marriage, I've never kicked him out and said, you go sleep on the couch. No, his his yeah. bed is in, in the room with me. So we keep that so we stay together, not kicking somebody out their room. So that's really good. Here's a point of wisdom. You know, these people say you get, get put in the dog house. We kept the dog and got rid of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not putting anybody in the mm. dog house. All right. Thank y'all for sharing your mission statements. Thank y'all for, oh, I see um, Elder Iverson joined us. Thank you, Elder Iverson, for joining us this evening. So our next question is, what song? I was going through a list of songs, too, and then a whole bunch of other songs came to mind. What song describes your husband, your spouse, your fiance? Eric? What song describes your person that you're in love with? Let me go first. I want okay. to go first. I want to okay. go first. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. On our wedding day. Oh, you take my song. Go ahead. That's why I wanted to go first. On our wedding day, the song that was played was a love like this by Phil and Brenda Nicholas. Yes, and it was a love like this will stand the storm, come winter, rain, or summer. And that song has been it was sung at our wedding, and has been that mantra that we've had ups and downs. And our renewal. And our renewal. Yes. And, yeah, we did that every day too. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's 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 been our song, and so um, I think it sums us up tremendously accurately because we had some shaky grounds mm -hmm. in our engagement. At one point, I didn't think we was gonna make it. Right. Um, she was hard to get along with, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but that song has really. I think that's it. All right. So I stole yours, huh? Yes, you did. So. Yeah. All right, that's our song together. We both like that song. I have put another song down as well, but that's the one that really stuck out. And what is the the Charlie Wilson song? Mm. The closer I get, no, not that's Roberta Flack, a closer mm. I get to you. I hey. can't remember the closer the Charlie Wilson. I think about it in, in a minute. But a love like this from Phil and Nicholas. I'm ready to put it in the chat. Okay. So if anybody wants to, mm. to look up the song, they you can, can play do it on that. YouTube. Let me let me also put one more. Um it's not a song that really sums us up, but it's a song that I associate with her. And when she had finished her chemo treatment, we had a, a lifelong celebration. Yes. And we invited uh, at least 100 guests and friends and family to come together. Mm -hmm. And her song was I'm Coming, I'm coming Out. <laughs> By Diana Ross. Yeah. And yes. so that was her theme song yes. for that after she came out of a chemo treatment. Mm -hmm. And so every time I hear that song, I think of her. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. All right. Who would like to go next? Uh, I'm going to put this in there. We'll go mm -hmm. next. Over oh, I'm like, you all have multiple songs yes. that, <laughs> that, that, um, he, he really wants to tell, like, tell y'all about a song about, about me that I told her it was inappropriate. No, he lied. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a Tupac song. No. Oh, <laughs> come on, Tupac. <laughs> This is my hey. he always have jokes. Hey, so, hey, at least it won't it won't uh what's that song? It's like a jungle out there, but keep the one how people going on. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a P Funk or Parliament song? We don't know. <laughs> That's an old one, old, old one. one. Oh, sure. That's old when sure. rap was rap. <laughs> it was rapper's delight, I think. That was the name yeah. of that. Yeah, group. yeah. Okay. Yeah. My my song for Michael is and I, I I went back and forth between this song and another song, um, but it's um, The Truth by India I Read. Mm. There's a part in the song that says, um, I love the way he thinks. I love the way he speaks. I love the way he treats his mama. I love the gap yes. in between his teeth. And we know that Michael doesn't have a gap. However, boy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I love, you know, I'm learning to love. Even the things that I dislike about him, they they make Michael Michael. And, and I think that, you know, through 
through prayer and and fasting because sometimes I can't do this by myself <laughs> and I have to have you know the Lord to help me through this situation um but even though like I I might not personally like it I love him All right. so so I have to love that about him and and you know and then he understands that um don't don't drive me crazy <laughs> with, with it all the time but anyway so and my other song was my last first kiss by Tamia mm. and first time I heard that song well I was riding my car and the song came on I said oh this is gonna be Michael's song because and I didn't know it at the time you know we had met and I liked the song but the way I was feeling about him in the beginning of our relationship is I was like I really want this for me, I want this to be my last first kiss. I don't want to kiss somebody else for the first time. I don't want to do anything else with somebody okay. for the first time. I want all of my first to be my last first with Michael. Praise God, beautiful. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right now. Yeah. Hey, hey, Michael, you got some revelation right there. Man, listen, uh, I, I'm ready to get off the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And then before you go there, before you go, while those are on, go ahead and put in the chat. What is your what song mm. describes the person you're with? Let's get some feedback in the comments. What song describes the person you're with? Share some of your songs. Thank you. And, and, and Mr. Mike, before you get, get there, uh, Pastor Doshi, you said something that I think was revelatory that we need we shouldn't breeze past. Mm -hmm. Even the things you dislike, yes, you still love him. And I think that was so critical. I think I think sometimes we Harper on the dislikes, and sometimes that dislike can cloud our judgment, and so that was very that was very powerful. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank my you. My, my song is uh, "When I'm With You" by Tony Terry. Okay. Ooh. And uh, that's going to be our wedding song. All right. All right. <laughs> that's good. And if you listen to the song, that says everything. Praise God. And this is how I feel about Doshi. When when I'm with her, I'm I'm happy. I'm confident. Uh, she supports me, and she just puts that that push behind me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it, it makes me go forward and do bigger and better things in life. And the the love she has for Christ is really motivating. Okay. To have someone next to you that love Christ just like you do, yeah, it, it it really does make your ministry easier. And Amen. it's nothing easy about ministry, but it makes your ministry easier, if that makes Amen. sense. All right, I like that. Elder Sly, I see you on to Pastor, uh, Minister Sly. Listen, mm -hmm. here's a song that just popped in my, 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 my head. Ain't no stopping us now. Mm -hmm. We're on the move. <laughs> Come on. All right, I'm stopping. And this one says, um, <laughs> um, Elder Williams said, Iverson said, Opposites of Tracks by Paula Abdu. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody mad at you right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's not another song. Okay. okay. All right, then. Myra and Louie. Okay, so I want to go off of you guys with the kind of two songs. So the first one, actually, I didn't know if it could count because it reminded me of us and our relationship, but it wasn't describing him. So I didn't know if that was like cheating because I wanted to honor. Cheat like, on, cheat on, sister. Really about him. <laughs> but they sang it today at church and it was um, one of the songs that was at our wedding ceremony as well. Um, and it was the, I give myself away hey, yes. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I remember, um, that was such an emotional song for me because kind of like how Doshi was talking about her last first kiss. Like I remember being kneeling down with him on the altar and, um, facing the cross and just really like tr truly trying to surrender more of myself right um to say that i give myself away in a way that i haven't before number one to god and number mm -hmm. one to who was going to be my husband and it was like oh that like that scared that letting go and yet mm -hmm. you know to just feel like it was so appropriate it was like this mm -hmm. is the timing this is the way it's meant to be done like this is right and um, and are you ready? And it was, uh, like, it was just, there was so much there. And, um, 
I just, I think that concept of surrender, recently I heard a quote that said, you can't both strategize and surrender at the yeah. same time. And yeah. I didn't like it. I was like, I don't know about that. I'm going to, I'm going to struggle with that for a little, wrestle with that for a little bit. But I like that idea of, um, you know, really opening your hands Yes. like physically and just saying okay um and it goes with what doshi michael saying too with the compromise concept of like you right. know i'm i'm surrendering myself i'm giving myself um to god and and to this man um in a way that i have not and will not give myself to anybody well, so that's, that's beautiful that's a when that came on today i was like oh wow <laughs> um, okay Love and it. then there's a song it's very simple um because I just couldn't find like the right like I had a few different ones like oh that could apply or that could apply but the one that um I was thinking about is called The Way I Am by Ingrid Michaelson and I used to teach ballroom to a lot of wedding couples like getting ready for their wedding dance and there were quite a bit of couples who would come in and they liked that song. And Louie used to visit me at the studio. And so he would come in and I just remember thinking like, wow, this, like I'm here training, working with wedding couples and we were dating. Uh -huh. And it was like, I wonder if this could apply. And it was that concept of, it's a, it's, there's, I think beauty and the simplicity of the lyrics. You know, okay. it's that story of like growing old and just you love me the way I am and um, and I'll love you the way you are. And it's that all embracing kind of like, again, Doshi was saying, no matter what, there might be parts I don't really like, but like I love you and through the Lord's grace, like I'm going to continue to love more and more of you every day versus the opposite. You know, I think it can get scary vulnerability. You see more and more of yourself and the parts mm -hmm. that you don't like yes. and then the other person and I think of that you know like the velveteen rabbit kind of concept of like okay. the more you actually are real and see each other with God's grace that's when the love really becomes real and magic and um yeah <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not going to switch up where my mind was going um okay because then i started writing notes i was like oh well then i could think about this but <laughs> so, so I'll, I, I'll do a two part one part and what makes me think of her type All right deal it's really any great salsa or bachata song come and on if man you know, if you know, if you know Mara, then you know she's an amazing dancer so yes. i i hear a great salsa bachata specifically and and my mind takes me to just already envisioning dancing with her because I don't know how to dance that great. But um, in my mind, it's like I'm with her, <laughs> like crushing that floor. Um, but in terms of a song that that describes her, because I think that was the, the question, like what song yes. describes. Yes. And I I'm going to kind of cheat because I could not I could not find a perfect song and so i'm gonna go with and if you guys let me cheat a little bit proverbs 31 because when when i was able to read that mm -hmm. and think of her like have a tangible physical person to say oh my goodness i mean okay. you pull any line out of here noble character her husband me has full confidence in her and and for that reason, I lack nothing of value. Like those are lines that, you know, yeah. no song can. And obviously, you guys know it goes even more and more. And and so, but just that alone already is like nothing in this house. There's nothing tangible that could even compare to her. Oh, so I'm going with Proverbs 31, and and all maybe right. that's I love it. Feeding. Well, hey, 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 he cheated. Hey, you can he make did. A he cheated. <laughs> he did, but, I, but, but in, your defense, in your defense, I think it is a Proverbs 31 song. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, 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 I'm glad you, you bailed him out because he's making us look bad out. It, it looks good. But you know what? No, no. We need to Google that. 
Okay. <laughs> let, let me share. Okay, the Owens is saying Still in Love is their song. Good evening, Elder Kendrick. Good to see you on. Rochelle Patterson um, said, Barry White, I always love you. His songs are always wonderful. And Sheila and uh, Elder uh, Iverson had uh, here Luther. And, here Luther. And there's some Luther, Luther in the house. Here and now. Let, let me also say this. Yeah. Let me also say this, that Myra was my first and only Zumba instructor. Oh, yes. Right? <laughs> that girl, could, I said only. <laughs> she used to work us out. And there was one time she was doing something. She said, suck that stomach in. I said, it is something. You just can't, you just can't see it. <laughs> you just can't see it. But then, uh, Louie, she can dance. Yes, she is. Yes. She's a dancer. Oh, yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I quit. I retired shortly after she, after she left UIW. I retired from Zumba. Oh, wow. <laughs> so thank you for those who are on. We're talking about our mission statement. If you've not had a mission statement, the importance of having a mission statement, even before you get married, so you know what your negotiables and non-negotiables are. And we were sharing that, and we just shared what's a song that would describe the person that you're with. So my next question is, what does it mean to move your relationship from good to great. Since we we're on part two of that, we didn't get a chance to address that. How do we move to, in your mind, move the relationship from good to great? Who started that? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let, uh, want me start off this? You can. Okay. I was, you know, that's a really, I think maybe that's the toughest question all day long. But for me, to move our relationship from good to great, I'm gonna go back to the book where she stole the question from um, by Jim Collins. Yes. And he says, good is the enemy of great, great. Yes. right? That's the, that's the opening sentence. Good is the enemy of great. And I think that is so appropriate because if we settle for good, we would never reach for great. Yeah. And so I'm never settling for good because it can always be better. Yes. And so one of the things for me that we keep moving it is keep moving the goalposts. So it's, it's becoming a struggle for me, for instance, how to celebrate her birthday how to celebrate our anniversaries because, you know, after 34 years, uh, maybe y'all, you guys may be more creative than me, but my creativity is only so small. So I keep trying to figure out how to outdo what I did last month, right? Or last year. But for me, it's not just celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, it's weekly, daily. What can we do to improve our daily activity? What can we do to make sure that we don't get in that rut? Because it's easy to fall in the rut of, of, of well, we just we were married and blah, 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 right? But the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, but, you know, being married to me is, is, is not easy. Because I'm a thinker, right? And I'm a visionary. So sometimes I get so, so caught up into this big old grandiose uh, vision and she's my grounder. She grounds me. She anchors me. And so I've always got to keep doing whatever I decide to do in relationship with her, not to move outside of her. So what keeps us moving is the communication. What keeps us grounded is that communication. What keeps us um, happy and, and, and jovial is our time with God. If you have not seen the Alexanders pray, it is nothing like you've ever seen before. You get to pray and you, me you mess up in your prayer. We will correct you. <laughs> That's not how it says in the scripture. You know, you and have fun we have fun life. in prayer, right? It's uh, the other day, okay, here I'm in, in transparency. I was reading Psalms, whatever Psalm it was, yes. and there was a word I read into it that was not in the, in, in, in the text. And she's reading alongside me. She said, that's not what it said. I said, I know it, but it sounded better for when I said it, right? And here we go in this big old discussion about what should be in the, and this is in the midst of our prayer, yes. right? And so for us, it's that joy of always, Moving forward to back to what uh, the Rodriguez was saying, moving up towards God, but in such a joyful way. It's never a chore. It's not something. So when we pray, it's like, oh my God, let's get that out of the way. No, is we do it because we enjoy praying together. Very good. I like that. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I did. Yeah. And you know, you, you said told me something. to say that. Uh, hello, <laughs> you know it. You know it. Um, I would say also, what moves your relationship from good to great? The dating. Mm -hmm. as you guys are before you get married the things that you attracted to one another remember those things the laughter the fun talking all night long looking at each other's eyes 
because you can get to a place that you stop looking into one another's eyes. And that's so important so you can see what's going on. Being present. Yeah, you're watching TV, but you know what? Stop and say, hey, baby, I love you. Wait, yeah. wait. Uh -huh. Are you going to talk about that? Yeah, I know, because okay. I mean, you know, because mm. I get caught up in a movie and I don't listen at all to anybody. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you some of the things I say to her and she has no response. I'm like, you're not even listening to me. So um, that's important. You want to continue to enrich, to empower one another. And that's so important that we continue to build one another up in that relationship. And as we do that, we move, we're move. we moving forward. So who would like to go next? Yeah, we can go next. Okay. okay. And, you know, I think that very similar to, uh, to you, Bishop and Overseer, we think um, in order to move our relationship from good to great, um, we have to start setting realistic short-term goals and long-term goals mm -hmm. and, and really spending time with God um, in contemplation and discernment to make sure that this is, these are God's goals, not our goals. Mm -hmm. And you know, for the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, you know, year, two years, three years, four years, five years, seven years, 10 years. And, you know, and, and that they're measurable. And right. how, how will we know that we accomplished this goal? What, what's the, what will we have to show for, for this? And, and again, it's not what we decide or determine. It's not one of those things that you can, you know, like sometimes we quickly think of things, but we put them on a shelf and pray about it. We put, no, we put it on the altar. <laughs> Let me say that. <laughs> we put it on the altar and we pray about it so that we know that this is not something that, that kind of, that, that's, that's in our flesh, that's self-serving, self-seeking, but it is for the edification of, of our union in the earth. So, you know, you know, I, and, and then can we honestly say that we are at a different place, March 13, 2022, than we was March 13, 2021, you know, and, and, and reflecting on the, and doing it at different points throughout the relationship, throughout the relationship. I keep a, a journal, I write everything down. I have a few and, <laughs> I mean, I write everything down. Louis, I write everything down. I'm not, <laughs> I'm typing. I got, I have a Word document that I put stuff in. <laughs> and so I don't have a pen and paper right now. And I just think that, and, and Michael's the opposite. He doesn't write anything down. He'll start and then a few weeks will go by and he's asking me questions and and I'm not bothered by it because I know he don't write stuff down. I thought you was going to keep a journal, keep a, a, a to-do list. Oh, well, it's in my work bag. It's in the car. It's just all this stuff, right? Um, but like I said, that doesn't bother me. We are, we know what works for our relationship. But, but I think what's really important for us because we're so early in our relationship is, is, is reflecting on the growth process. Beautiful. I like that. That's also, good. I, I just like to add that um, for me, how I think that I can make the relationship better is to remove myself from the middle. Okay. Mm. Stop making everything be about me. All right. And being offended is a choice. Yes. yes. So if you take yourself out the middle, you cannot be offended. Okay. You got to keep your eye on a prize. See, I, I, I really do feel like that it's really hard for two people that's in ministry to become one because the devil knows what kind of work y'all can do once y'all become one. Oh, yeah. So totally. I, I think for me, I, I just try to remind myself that it's not about me. Oh, it's I about see. the ministry. So stop being offended by things so you can get to work and do God's work. All right. And you know, it's very powerful when you're in ministry together, as you were saying, in any marriage or any relationship, it's work, but it's well worth it. 
because I tell you that God will be blessed. People will be blessed. And as you stay humble with one another and you uplift one another and saying that we're doing this together, um, that was our thing when we first started out. It's not about us, but it's all about God. So as you do that and you're seeking God, he will help to blend that relationship for understanding and just to, um, because you're getting to know different people and you have their different baggages, but they come together. But it's a beautiful thing. God has a way of just working that way, working it out. Myra and Louie, go ahead. Oh, you know what? Thank you. Minister Reed, I don't think I had mentioned you being on and you were up there at the beginning. Oh, oh, Bishop did mention. Thank you so much, Minister Reed, for keeping your comments going. Y'all keep your comments going. Thank you. I'm, we're bring watching. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Elizabeth, thank you for joining us this evening. All right. So uh, good to great. Here's good to great. Couple couple things um i think transparency so right. transparency in the, what what comes to mind is like and and you all know in terms of things that we have gone through whether it was the drinking with me and quickly being transparent to go the next day literally saturday the situation happened this was the first time saturday the situation happened drank too much, she saw me drunk and going straight to Sunday school. I'm in tears crying to you because I feel like you're gonna punish me. And I'm like, this is what happened. And, but the, the fact is that was transparency. And then uh, another instance like that. And she's feeling like, hey, we need to be transparent with people who God put in our lives to let them know immediately uh like within the real time of it going on right. and that type of transparency um regardless of how shameful we can feel as as people um if we don't make ourselves vulnerable in that way um we could literally put ourselves uh in a position where um we just hide that darkness and right. that darkness just grow whether it's in just one individual, but even if it's in one individual, I mean, Michael just noted the power of one right. and you split that house up and, and you can just crumble from the inside out. So um, transparency, big humility. Um, I don't know how to tie it with the sense, but I think this phrase was in the book, good to great. And if not, obviously there was another book, what got you here won't get you there. Right. So that's true. The, yeah. The humility of saying we don't know it all. Like we we're humble in the sense of um just because we're here and we've accomplished these things, it's not really going to be enough to get us to those uh that that um um sustainable uh growth right I, I wouldn't say sustainable platform but the sustainable growth that we're going to continue again tying it back to the mission statement we're trying to equip ourselves to accompany others and so it's a, that continuous improvement um and then again uh I, I put the word awareness um in terms of just being aware of of the phases and stages so when i noted the stages of a team forming storming norming and performing the phases and those specific stages knowing um knowing where you are uh to put some intentional things in play to say it's okay that we're in storming right now because another baby's coming and we're going to be in that phase so um it's 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 okay that we're not in that performing mode but that shouldn't impact our relationship we just not to say that that's how it is right now like we are good good catch bro because she was looking yeah. at you <laughs> <laughs> we could say we're in story but but again i mean I, in in all reality the the beauty and value of us being with you guys here today like if we're in storming right now, but yet we're tying ourselves to these type of action things, it really, you know, puts us in a mindset of, 
hey, today we have a call. Today we need we need to put some uh, intentional effort on connecting with each other because we want God to speak through us. Um, so yeah, anything else? Um, I think just a few of the big things I was thinking, I really like, there's a couple, there, the pop checks, it's Dr. Greg pop check and his wife. And they do, um, they have some books and like a radio show and his, one of his big things that he talks about is the four rituals of connection. And so to me, like communication and connection have been really big as far as just a theme that I've heard through counseling a lot, like how are you guys connecting on a daily basis and in various ways um, and broken down into different categories. And I like the pillars. He, he basically, they talk about four and it's connecting through talk, play, work, and pray. Okay. And so it's just those four categories. And they say, you say can, it one more time. so it's talk, play, work, and pray. And so you can combine, you can mix and match, but the idea Mm -hmm. that they suggest is that like even getting your family involved, the kids involved that you have, like you can have a chart on the fridge for kids to hold you accountable because they'll be better at that. It's like, wait, we didn't work as a family yet. You know, and even Mm -hmm. if it's 15 minutes every day and you figure out, okay, you know, it's this time of day, the day got away from us. Okay, so we're going to try to combine say work and play and so we're gonna have the music on we're having a dance party and then we're gonna go to work and then you know get creative like that but I think the importance of connecting in the different ways is number one cannot be overestimated and number two can it can be too easily overlooked like dismissed where you just go so many days and it's like well you know, we're doing pretty well, right? And that will be in the good or less than good category. But great is when you're daily, it's like, mm-hmm. yep, we were playing. We had time to play and laugh together and experience joy together today. Yes. We prayed together today. And maybe like that was, you know, play and pray. Like maybe you combine those two <laughs> and yeah. we work together today. And I think that um, to me, it's like, that's where, when we can start being, grow in consistency Beautiful. with things like that, those four pillars, then we can be closer to that zone of, there's potential for us to get to greatness. Like this there is like the road to greatness, you know, like not that you ever get to, it's not a destination, but um, I just really appreciate the simplicity again of that. And yet it's not easy. Like it's true. Just, you know, everything is work. Easy. Yes. you got to work at it. You definitely have to work at it. I like that. And I'll put that in the, um, in the chat, in the comments. That is good. Talk, play, work, and pray. I like that. We want to address the question real quick, um, before we close out today. Yeah. This question is actually a bit more, um, com- complicated than my answer. Cause I don't, we have a short amount of time, but the question was, what if the other person don't want to grow? Right. In your relationship. In the relationship. The first thing I have to say, let's evaluate where we are in the right? relationship. In the relationship. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes what we perceive from the other may not be accurate, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Just because we think they don't want to grow may not be true. So evaluate where you are in that relationship then. Then you set goals back to what, um, the um, Minister Do- uh, Elder Doshi and Minister Robert were talking about um, set goals, measurable goals, right. right? So I may perceive she doesn't want to grow. I may be wrong. So we evaluate that and then we say, okay, these are the goals. How are we? And the other part of that, maybe my measurement of growth may be wrong. Right. Or are we using two different tables, right? So that's what I'm saying. This question should be, is really more complicated than my answer. Because I, I need to have more information to give more an accurate answer. Yeah. So I would say first, uh, assess the relationship, All right. find out what goals, uh, what tools you're using to measure. Right. And if the person says to you, we're doing okay, we don't need to do this. Then I would say to you, how, va- how much do you value growth, mm-hmm. right? Because growing is work. It is. And sometimes painful, right? I would go back to my time in Zumba. Man, I didn't like going to the Zumba because it was work. Right. I had to sweat. But at the end of the day, I felt better. Right. So it's healthier. It's healthier. Yeah. So I don't know how to fully answer all of that without taking more time. But again, assess the relationship, 
find out what tools you're using to measure. And then once you get an accurate account, then you set the goals to move the guideline. But don't set it so far. Right. That is going to seem impossible. Measurable goals, small goals, right? So today, this week, we're going to pray again. Right. Right. Yeah. Next week, we do something else. But make those goals measurable because sometimes we may feel as failure mm -hmm. because we set those goals too far. Right. And, to, and we and have not other, attained them. And, the other and doesn't, doesn't seem like it. we are we're growing. Right. So that's my answer for now. And we'll pick it up um, maybe down the road. Because that's really a very good question. Yeah. But it, it's a little more complicated to answer yeah. in the short amount of time that we have. Let me also say this, because I know you're going to ask words for wisdom. This is just something that just happened to us this week. Okay. Um, for those who know or may not know, we lost our first child March 10th, 1989. Mm -hmm. And it's always been a struggle um, when that time comes around. We notice a, re a behavior in her every year. And we just make adjustments for her, understanding that there's there's some growing pains. Mm -hmm. But when did you say Friday? Yeah. Friday on the way drive down, driving down to, to Houston, she said, baby, it's about time for us to, to have a birthday party for Joshua. We've never had a birthday party. We've always prayed with, uh, and it's interesting, the girls who've never met him have this, this, they have conversation about it, but we've never had a physical birthday that says we're gonna gather as a family to celebrate the life that didn't fully make it, mm -hmm. right? So my point is that sometimes in, in our relationships, mm -hmm. we're gonna have areas of that, that we need to have, not, I'm not even gonna call it closure, but we must attend to it right. versus keeping looking over it. Uh, one of the reasons I never pushed it because she wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. You know, now we're talking about next year be 34 years. And now okay. she's, not, well, oh. no, they're 33 this yeah, year. Yeah. Next year be 34. Mm -hmm. Now she's ready to do this, but we never pushed her. She wasn't ready. Now she's ready. We're ready to move on as a family. It's not just us. We're going to do it as a family. So I only bring that out to say this. There are times in our lives that we have to know when to push the envelope right. and don't push it too tightly, right? I'm going to use a Sankofa bird, for instance. The Sankofa bird, the body is moving forward, look like it's moving forward. The head is moving back. Look and sometimes that. it's sitting on the egg or the egg is in the beak. Because if that, we squeeze that egg too tightly, it will break. Mm -hmm. We hold it too loose, it will fall and break. You just got to know when to hold it and measure it. So in our, my words of wisdom mm -hmm. is know how to work with your partner. Yeah. Not to push them, not to hurt them, but be patient and let God do the rest. Well, thank you. You, you, you wrapped it up for us. I so figured it was, it was time. Yeah, about two minutes. Yes. You know what? This conversation is so good. Um, I've seen the comments that we're doing because I believe in every relationship that you want growth, you're wanting to move it from good to great. So I know Myra will be having her baby. When's your baby due, Myra? We're full term in a week. So we'll be 37 weeks on this next Sunday. So I'm trying to mentally prepare for as early as then because it always comes earlier than I think. So I'm. I think if I back it up to at least 37, that's when we had our last. With that's when we had Nico in 37 okay. weeks. So, yeah, we'll see. All right. So we'll plan something maybe again in July, for us to come back again. So we have time to just discuss because our youth are trying to get on now. They're trying to plan for our Easter program. So I want to thank everybody for joining in tonight for words for the soul. We are on part two. So this is going to take us to part three in July. So get ready as we're moving relationships from good to great. Let me close in prayer. Father, we thank you right now for all those who have tuned in. We thank you for Minister Roberts, Pastor Doshi. We thank you for the Rodriguez's. We thank you for all of those who are on this line watching and those who will share. God, we thank you as it goes into homes we may never go into. A word has been said that would encourage, would uplift, to let them know that they are loved, that they matter, that God has a plan for them in their relationships. God, so we thank you that the words that were said in tonight have been fruitful, God, and it will bring forth the increase, a mighty harvest, that you will be glorified and the enemy shall be horrified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. Thank you all so much for being with us. Have a beautiful evening. Let us know when the baby comes. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. All, right, all right, love you guys. Bye-bye.